Good morning and welcome to Church on the Couch. And I don't know about you guys here or you at home, but this morning I think we've all got the joy of the Lord because uh, we've just spent some time laughing together. And now we're going to spend some time worshiping together as we sing about our Lord and the joy that we find in Him and the strength that we find in Him. Let's sing together. One, two, three, and...
I'm not sure about everyone. But it's, uh, it's been an interesting six months since we first sat down together for church on the couch. And uh, probably over six months now, actually. And in that six months, I asked us all to think about that very first time that we sat together, all those months ago. I asked everyone, those on the couch and those watching at home, to think about what it looked like to choose worship and what it looked like to choose worship as an intentional choice. And so I suppose now as we reflect on that time and we look forward to transitioning into meeting together and maybe uh, transitioning to what a virtual space looks like uh, as well. I want to encourage everyone again to think about, again, what it looks like to choose worship. When the convenience in life has been stripped away over the last six months, the convenience of church and the convenience of so many things that we do, what has it meant in your life to choose worship, to make it an intentional choice to follow God? to continue to build our life around God and not about the things in our life, but around God. Everything else can be ripped away, but the fact that he is high above all else, the fact that he is worthy of all praise, the fact that we live for him, the Amen. fact that we live for him, means that everything else in this world can continue to change it continue to ebb and flow. What church looks like may continue to change and may continue to ebb and flow. But we continue to live for Him and for Him alone. And we don't get caught up in anything else. We're going to sing some words about that right now. And I invite um, everyone, whether you're here or at home, whatever space or time you're viewing this in, um, to reflect upon that last little period that we've had together. The choice to worship. It's the intentional act to worship and to build our life completely and solidly around the rock, the love, the grace and the mercy that is steadfast and above all else. So let's join together as we sing some of these words together right now.
incredible privilege and opportunity that we've had over the last few months to come together in yes a different look a different feel but in a way that we're still connected and still engaged with each other and still connected and still connected and engaged with you oh lord and so god right now as we give you the praise and the glory for that time we want to lift you high above all else we want to say, great is thy faithfulness. Great is the faithfulness for the last the period of time where we've been able to join together in worship. We want to thank you that in the midst of everything, in the midst of the convenience being ripped away, that we can still come and make our worship fully and solely about you. We live for you, Amen. Lord. 
when the circumstances of life change, in the midst of different changing things in our lives, you are our rock. Your grace, your mercy, your love is steadfast and sure. And so God, we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honour right now. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. Thank you, Jared, for leading us. Thanks, everyone. Uh, beautiful worship this morning. Thank you at home for taking part, wherever you are and whoever you're with. I uh, pray that you've been blessed today um, because of this offering of worship that we've been able to share together. So we're, uh, we're here on the couch once again, and um, we have um, Krista. Hi, Krista. Good morning. Good morning. Mm. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good, that's great. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Um, <laughs> right on. Uh, back here we have uh, Charlotte. Hello, Charlotte. Hello. Nice to have Charlotte you. Charlotte was with us for the very first church on the couch. <clears throat> the she very, very that. first one. She, yeah, that's right. That's right. And so it's, I think it's, it's nice as we, you know, as we start to transition to something new, it's nice to have Charlotte for, the, for this one. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, it's, Contributing Thank to the, you, the, the space here. Yeah. Um, Timmy? Hello. Part of the furniture? Again? <laughs> had a week off last week. It was nice. Had a week off last week. <laughs> back on the strings. Jared on the keys back here leading us strings. in worship on today. The You're on the strings, man. The strings, Good. that's right. Love it. Um, and um, we have Doug and Desley back again yeah. with us. Thank Morning, you so everybody. much. Morning, everybody. Yeah. And you are? Oh, and I am. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I'm Tim. Yeah, cool. Captain, I uh, mean, uh, Krista yeah. has. Do you want Major to make a comment about Tim and, and something that something that's happened with uh, Tim look, over the last? I, I just I don't enjoy Movember. For those of you who don't know what Movember I think it, is, I, thanks for the. It's the elephant in the room at the moment. Yes, isn't it? it is. Yeah, that's right. For those of you who don't know what Movember it's is, for whatever reason, <laughs> men around the world grow caterpillars on their lips and raise money. Now look, for the a purpose, very for a very worthy the purpose cause. is great. Men's and it's men's health. Men's, men's that's mental right. Health mental and, health and, and others. This year, otherwise. I think it's focused on mental health, which is really important. Don't get me wrong. I just, can't stand mustaches. mustaches. <laughs> But, but you know what? So you know what? I feel like I'm sitting next to a man that belongs in the 80s. Two, two, and... two men. <laughs> this man and then this man right here. It's, it's a person in and of itself, isn't it? But I, I tell you what, without, oh. without further ado, I mustache you a question. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I mustache you a question. And, and that is this. <laughs> um, we're talking about prayer today. All right? And so here's the question for you at home and for you here. Just to divert the attention away from my mustache, uh, let's talk about prayer. Let's talk about uh, potentially the prayer you uh, maybe prayed as a child. So did you have a prayer that you prayed with your parents or one that you recited at bedtime or was there a special one you did at a meal? Um, when you were a kid, do you remember either uh, something, reciting something or singing something or anything like that? Anybody have anything to offer along those lines? And you at home as well, think about that amongst yourselves or with your own self. <laughs> Maybe put a comment mm. in the chat. Look, my wow. prayer was always, now I lay me down to sleep. Right, I think that that's, yeah. right, that's a pretty, pretty standard. Yeah, pretty, pretty standard one. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray, pray the, the Lord, Lord my, my soul, soul to keep. keep. And, and if, if I die down. before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Yeah. And so that, that was mine growing up. And we taught it to our children. But what was always entertaining Especially Bella. Bella always just, I don't, she never, I don't think she got the words right. And so we would always be trying to correct her because she would say the most bizarre things yeah. as she was repeating well, this and, prayer. And so. Alex, too, would also ask yes. the question, will I? What, what if I die before yeah, I wake? Yeah, what if I die before I wake? That's right. How many conversations did uh, we have I, about we that? We had a few conversations about that. What if I, what if I that? die before I wake? Yeah, is that, that prayer common here as well? That, that yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Any, anything other than that one? Any, anybody do it off the cuff? Anybody brave enough as a, as a kid to just kind of do their own thing? No? Okay. Not really before bedtime. We, we always had our, like, our go-to graces Grace before, yes. dinner. Prayer before dinner. Yes. Like always the, mine was always, come Lord Jesus, be our guest, yeah. may this food for us be blessed. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, Not Superman? 
No, no. no that one came much later. That, that, one, that one was saved for like kids' camps and, yes. and all of that. Special yes. occasions. Special occasions, okay, that's right. I've got to ask you this one. Did you guys, you guys have here in Australia uh, Johnny Appleseed as a, as a, a no, song? No, because that is a U.S. Is it that's, a U.S.? That's a United States The Lord character. is good to me? Yeah, yeah, that's a his... The that's Lord a, is good to me. Yeah, no, that's, and so that's I a think North American Lord thing. For giving me. Timmy. Take over, so... <laughs> you want the to things are <laughs> good, the sun and the rain and the apple seed. The Lord is good to me. Johnny Appleseed. Amen. <laughs> No. 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 Okay. Now, now that we've heard the whole thing, we definitely not. Did not have that. So that was a very common grace that I loved to sing when I was a when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. At um, camp, I always dreaded that one because it just went on and on and on. Yeah, and on it did. And, and they'd so. go, Amen, 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 Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Um, we just want to eat. We just want to eat. Let us eat. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Look, on a more on a more serious note, 2020 has been quite the year. And so we're getting to the end of the year, and I think we're looking forward, all of us, with anticipation to that last day of the year and the rollover into 2021 and what that will mean for everybody. I but decorated la last week for Christmas because I'm ready for this year, too. Yeah, early. Yeah, that's right. You did decorate early. A lot earlier than we to, normally decorate. To move on. It's moving on. It seemed to be Christmas. If I decorate now, it'll go faster? It's soon no, to be Christmas in July. Um, which is actually winter here, but we won't get into that. <laughs> okay. um, but seriously, prayers for 2021. Do you have something that's been lingering in your heart, even in the latter part of this year? Is it too soon to, to start praying for 2021? I don't Absolutely. think it is. I don't think so. no, no. Um, what, what, is, what, is your, what are your thoughts? What are your prayers, in a nutshell, for 2021? Well, this is going to be quite serious, but I mean, I think the Lord has done all this to us this year. And he's done it so we can refocus upon him. Mm -hmm. And so my prayer for next year is a, an increased focus on the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that will happen through loving the Lord, loving your neighbor, making disciples, but also about individually that we will be seen as, as uh, showing the fruits of the Spirit mm -hmm. as part of all of that. So that's my prayer, so which I probably is a prayer for all times anyway. Mm -hmm. But I think for me, that's, that's what the focus is for coming year going into the coming year yeah thanks Doug yeah. anybody else Krista what about you yeah well I think um, I, you know something to reflect on is the fact that you know our 2021 here in Australia may actually look mm. the start of it is going to look different than the rest of the world yeah and I'm just incredibly mindful of that mm. as as I consider and think even now uh, you know, the UK is still in lockdown, and so mm. my parents are there and yeah, experiencing Canada to a that. certain extent. Canada is on its way back into lockdown, and um, yesterday there were easing of restrictions that were announced here. Yeah. Mm. And so, uh, and I, look, I, and this is a personal thing, but, you know, I do think to myself, when is the next time I'm going to be able to see my family? Yeah. Yeah. And so my, my prayer for 2021 is probably more of a personal one than it is, you know, for the larger church. Uh, but just, just that our world, I think, uh, I just want our world to be able to travel freely. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we're very blessed where we are, right yes. here and right now. Yes. Yeah, and so right. I think that we will walk into 2021 here in a much better space than the rest of the world. And that's wonderful. But it's also my prayer for the rest of the world to be able to be where we are. Yeah, right. Uh, and and at the same time, a prayer of thanksgiving. Absolutely. Absolutely. For yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Anybody else want to share? Prayer uh, going into 2021? I think, it, uh, I just touched on it before, um, during worship and prayer, but um, the discernment to know what's important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that 2020 is taught, uh, I was going to say for everyone, but at least for me, it's mm -hmm. taught, uh, and I know for a lot of people, in fact, that it has taught us the value of when there's been a whole lot of stuff that has changed around us, uh, things that we normally do, uh, commitments that we're normally part of, uh, when they've been taken away or removed, um, it started to teach us the value of what's important yes. and, yeah. and centering back in on a few of those things about, you know, faith is far more important than, you know, the church or the building. You know, your relationship with God is far more important than those sorts of things. And, family is more important than work and mm -hmm. making time for people uh, making time for friends and loved ones is more important than you know wasting time and mm -hmm. so my prayer for us all and myself included is that we don't we don't let go of that yeah. 
that those those things that we've come to realise that we hold on to when as things gradually, whenever that happens, and, and maybe for us sooner than, than for some other countries, but when they start to return to a, a new sort of normal, that we won't lose sight of the things and the values that we've learnt, that discernment to know mm. what's important in our lives right. and what we're spending time focusing on. Nice. Um, I think that's really important. Yeah. So that yeah. would be my prayer. Yeah. Thanks, Jared. Yeah. Thanks, Jared. Um, you know, in uh, in the last few weeks, we've been uh, in a series called Simplify, and we've been looking at what the early church devoted themselves to uh, that caused this incredible growth in the beginning. And, um, you know, devotion to uh, learning from God's Word together, we looked at that. Um, we looked at uh, fostering a fellowship of love. Uh, and we looked at remembering the sacrifice of Jesus uh, through the breaking of bread, through, through sharing and eating and participating in that common meal together. They were all contributing factors. And today we're going to look at the last of the four main things that the early church devoted themselves to found in Acts 2, 42, 47. And we are told there that they devoted themselves to prayer. Okay? So I, I want to begin by saying this. You know what? Prayer is absolutely the most incredible thing in the universe. That's because it's, it's how we communicate with the God that created us and everything else. And, and can I also state that there's no other religion on the face of this earth where people have access to their God like we do mm. to our God. Fact. Um, in relationship with God through Jesus, his unlimited power is available to us as his created beings. And this power is something that was very present, I believe, in the early church through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit inside of each believer. Now, James, an apostle who was a leader in the church in Jerusalem, wrote about the power of prayer in his book, aptly titled, James. <laughs> Interestingly, uh, you know, it's, it's widely believed that this was the first New Testament book that was ever written. And we're going to read from it now. And I'm going to invite you to turn to the book of James, you at home, um, if you finished having your conversation about prayer, which we invite you to continue to do, about your prayer for 2021, and perhaps even put something in the chat if you haven't already done so. But I'm going to invite you, you guys here at New Devices, and you at home, Bible Gateway or your paper Bibles, whichever you choose today, to look up James chapter 5, verses 13 to 18. That's James chapter 5, verses 13 to 18. And we're reading this morning from the New Living Translation. It says this, <clears throat> Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Elijah was as human as we are, and yet when he prayed earnestly that no rain would fall, none fell for three and a half years. Then he prayed again, the sky sent down rain, and the earth began to yield its crops. You know, the last two verses here suggest that as human as we all are, our prayers can change the very course of nature and history. That's how much power we have when we are in close relationship with God, but not only that, when we're in close relationship with each other. 
The people of the early church knew the power of prayer through the presence of the Holy Spirit. And immediately preceding this beautiful picture of the early church that we have in Acts 2 and 42 to 47, we find the day of Pentecost. We mentioned that in the very first Sunday of this series. That's the day that God sent His Holy Spirit to indwell the hearts of believers who were meeting together. And Peter shared um, the word in that space, and 3,000 people received and believed the gospel message that day, in that moment. Such was the power of the Holy Spirit in those days and there's no reason to believe that the same power is not available to us today. God has not changed. Jared mentioned that. The world has changed. God has remained the same and so has his power. His power is still available to every believer today and I believe that Prayer is the number one catalyst that will release this great power again today in his church. Well-known prayer author and intercessor E.M. Bounds, perhaps you've heard of him, maybe. He wrote this about the power of prayer. Prayer is power and strength, a power and strength that influences God and is most salutary, widespread, and marvelous in its gracious benefits to man. He says it again, prayer influences God. The ability of God to do for man is the measure of the possibility of prayer. Let me, let me say that again. The ability of God to do for man is the measure of the possibility of prayer. Prayer unleashes the power of the Holy Spirit in the lives of the people of his church, of his early church and his church today. And I believe that back then it was the key, and now it's the key that ties everything, all of this stuff that we've been talking about, it ties it together. So. The question is then, of course, how do we encourage this power to show up in our lives from day to day? How do we make this manifest? And the answer is a renewed emphasis clearly in God's church on prayer. But not only that, it's about a renewal, a renewed emphasis on prayer amongst a people who are in right standing with God and before God. God's word tells us this morning that the power of God is unleashed through the prayer of a righteous heart, a heart that is right before God. This righteousness has absolutely nothing to do with us and our moral character, and it has absolutely everything to do with God and the position that he bestows upon us who are in relationship with him. Now that's a mouthful. Holiness is a state of character. Righteousness is different. That is a state of position. Let's not confuse righteousness and holiness in case our minds were going there. You see, through the death and the resurrection of his son Jesus, uh, God has provided us with the opportunity to be in relationship with him. Our acceptance of this gift and our belief in the work of God through Jesus, that's the basis of our righteousness, all right? We are righteous because he makes it so. In the passage that we read earlier, verse 16 says, and these are powerful words, the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. I love how this version puts that. The people of the early church were righteous people. They were people who were in right standing before God. But not only that, they weren't only in right standing individually, but they were people who were in right standing together. 
their individual righteousness was magnified by their togetherness. And I had to look up whether or not that was a word. Mm. It is a word, mm. togetherness. And their togetherness, in turn, magnified the power of the Holy Spirit working through them. Mm. You follow me? Mm. For the past five weeks, we've been looking back. We've been looking back to a simpler time. We've been looking back to a time where God's blessing was overflowing. To a time when people shared perhaps more so than they do today in incredibly authentic community, to a time when God's church grew exponentially, and we've been asking the reason why. And as we close our time today, I'd like to take a look back a little further than that. Acts chapter 1. Jesus has just ascended into heaven, and he left his apostles to continue the work that he called them to. And in chapter uh, 1, verse 12, it says this, okay? If you want to look it up. It says, Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, a distance of half a mile. And when they arrived, they went to the upstairs room of the house where they were staying. And here are the names, it says, of those who were present. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew. Love that name. Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. Not Judas Iscariot. And it says in, in verse 14, it says this, they all met together and they were constantly united in prayer. Mm -hmm. Along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, several other women were there, and the brothers of Jesus. They all met and were constantly united in prayer. The first thing, the first thing that the very earliest followers of Jesus did was pray. And not only did they pray, they prayed this was the environment in which the Holy Spirit moved in the lives of the people of his church. And I believe that if we can work together to devote ourselves in a fresh way to an environment of prayer, whatever that looks like, an environment of prayer, then the Holy Spirit, he is ready to move again in ways that we never, ever, ever thought possible. And God will begin again to add to our numbers daily those who are being saved. Look, I'm going to quote a song, and it's, it's a Gaither song, all right? And I'm not necessarily given to quoting Gaither songs. But I remember, I remember, I remember being a child, and my parents had a Gaither cassette tape. <laughs> For those of you who are young kids, you have no idea what I'm talking about. A cassette tape in their car. And I used to ask mom and dad to put it on all the time because it had one song on it that I absolutely loved. And it's this one. Whenever we agree together, the Holy Spirit starts to move. Whenever we agree together, his mighty power he will prove. I love this. If his children love each other till their hearts become as one and two or three agree together and i can hear the music in my head and two or three agree together he has promised he will be there and the work will be done so that's my prayer we shared prayers at the beginning my prayer as a church is that we would put aside distractions we would put aside divisions and we will continue to agree together in prayer. And if we do, I think we need to prepare ourselves yeah. because revival is coming. I believe it. If we agree together, he will be there and the work will be done. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask Desley, Desley, would you, would you pray with us to this effect? Um, just by the leading of the spirit in these moments, let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we just bow before you in awe at this time. Lord, we are just so grateful for your 
sacrifice, yes, Lord. for your grace, for your mercy, for your unfailing love and your steadfast faithfulness. And Lord, our prayer is that we will individually and collectively yes. be in right standing with you. Mm. Lord, I pray that as Elijah did, that we too will believe, we will have faith, and that we, as righteous people, will claim your promises. Yes, Lord. Because we do believe that those prayers will indeed result in great outcomes if our faith is firmly grounded in you. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the past months. They've been really hard and it's been difficult in so many aspects of our lives. But the one true thing for all of us has been that you have been there. You have never left us. And Lord, as we move next week to meet together, we thank you for that opportunity. We pray that we shall be a congregation who prays together, united in our belief in you and in the infilling of the Holy Spirit and the work that can be done in that way. Lord, we think of the rest of the world at the moment. We're so grateful that we live where we do and that the pandemic has been suppressed at this point in time. We thank you for the way in which that has occurred and the safety, the sense of safety that that brings for us. But we know that we can't afford to take any risks. We need to be cautious. But Lord, we pray for those in the rest of the world, for family in other parts of the world, for friends in other parts of the world who are in lockdown in so many countries, Lord. We know how difficult that can be and we just pray that your spirit will move and that solutions will be found, yes. that the vaccines that are promised will become effective, Lord, and that we shall be able to reunite with family and friends in the not too distant future. But amongst all of this, Lord, we don't know the answers, but we know that you are in control mm. and we give you praise and thanks for that. I pray all these things in and through your precious name. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, the wonderful thing is that in the midst of an unknown future, we serve a known Savior. Mm -hmm. And He is a Savior that we need. So I'm going to wonder, I'm wondering if we can sing that song again, just as we pray together and as we continue in worship for just a few more moments. Lord, I need you my one defense, my righteousness. As we sing, and as you sing at home, perhaps close your eyes and listen to those words and acknowledge your need of a savior. Perhaps you're out there, you're listening and you just don't know about all of this Christianity stuff and, and God stuff. I wanna invite you to leave your heart open in these moments to what God may have to say to you as we sing this song. Lord, I need you.
stand on your word, Holy Spirit, reign now. Amen. Well, that's our prayer for our church, that the Holy Spirit would rain down. And I know that we've already alluded to a couple of times the fact that next week we are excited because we are meeting together as a church family for the first time in eight months. Yeah. And so that that's is awesome. going to be a beautiful and wonderful experience, one that we've been looking forward to for quite some time. And actually the theme for next Sunday is together. And Tim mentioned that uh, several times in his sermon today, um, being together. And so uh, yesterday, our church family would have gotten an email that would have been very specific to the things that we need to be aware of and that we need to do as we prepare to gather together next Sunday at Living Church on Creek Road. And I uh, just want to say that if you've been joining us through uh, our online platform like this, if you've been part of Church on the Couch with us in our journey, we are going to uh, also hopefully, if everything works out well, live stream next Sunday morning. We're hoping that's gonna, that's gonna happen, we're hopefully. Hoping, we're hoping. And so we want to invite you into that space, but also we want to invite you physically to come with us. Mm -hmm. Uh, next Sunday and there will be some stuff on social media that will help you in pre-registering for that event um, and so we'd love to see you face to face and in person. Exciting times. Exciting times. We are excited about that and moving from here you know our set is going to look a little bit different. Our mm -hmm. platform is going to look a little bit different and so we look forward to what that will be. Yeah, and what God has in store and for the next chapter. Has in store for the next chapter, yeah. hmm. for sure. Awesome. Now, Church on the Couch isn't going away. That's right. No, no. we're going to have opportunities where we're going to bring it back yeah. and uh, where online we'll be able to worship together mm -hmm. um, because the intimacy of this setting has been good. Yes. And so we want to hold on to that yeah. uh, when we can. So it's not, it's not going somewhere. No. But uh, Sunday mornings will look a little different. Yeah. And that's going to be great. It will. And the Holy Spirit will meet us there where two or three agree together. That's right. The Holy Spirit will move. So he we're promised he will be there. He promised he will be there. And the work will be done. There you go. Amen. I'm singing it in my head now right. as well. Yes. It's, yeah. Anyway. All right, folks. Uh, listen, um, we hope that you'll have a chance to um, engage with the resource that is either in the description above or below, depending on how you're watching. Uh, either on your own reflectively or with a group of people. We hope that you have time while you're in that space to perhaps share a meal together, pray together, and just enjoy each other's company and get to know each other in relationship as you go a little bit deeper into God's Word. And without further ado, we'll say goodbye uh, from the couch for today. Bye, everybody. Bye. Happy Bye, Sunday. Everybody. Bye. Don't you can't. You can't stand the mustache. I am here, just mustache. See, the least you could do mustache is mustache salad. You need to color it so people can actually no, see it. No, well, the least you could do, the least you could do is do something with your What's hair. Put mascara on. I reckon you need to color it. <laughs> Makeup. Makeup. Can't Mascars. see that. Makeup. 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 <laughs> Maybe if you did your hair, it wouldn't look so bad. Makeup. <laughs> my mustache. Like, I feel like we're in the 80s. Or Do something. you? If you don't stop talking about my mustache, I'm going to work it into my intro. Okay. No, this is the intro. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> we're back in the chair. Let's push it. Oh. Okay, for real now. Okay.